We have the Campbell County Conservation District with us too here. Linda, are you leading the charge? No. Oh, okay. All right. Good morning. Good morning, Fiscal Court. My name is Kurt Hill. I am a district supervisor on the Campbell County Conservation District. And Patty Dishar is here with me as well, our district super er, district manager as well. And then you know Linda. <laughs> So thank you for the opportunity to speak, um, Judge Executive and Commissioners and broader leaders. So we're here today to honor Soil and Water Stewardship Week, as we always do together, but also wanted to give you an annual update on how we are supporting the county. So first off, you know our mission, right? You are familiar with it because we've been doing it for a very long time. So conservation districts, as you probably know we're started as a result of the 1930s dust bowl. So long term economic impacts, environmental impacts across the United States um, due to lack of conservation practices on land. So here in Campbell County in 1945, our citizens voted to establish the conservation district here. Um, so we've been driven by our citizens from the very beginning. So I wanted to give you some highlights on what we're doing for the community, how we help landowners, uh, how we support education and conservation. And you've seen some of these slides before, so what I'm gonna do is speak to things that are new. So where you see asterisks are probably things I'll be highlighting so that you know how we're evolving to support our citizens. So first up, landowners. We support our professional farmers, right? But also people that just wanna be good stewards of our land. So what you see here on the screen are some of our most popular programs. Recent updates, the Dead Animal Removal Program, we are now 100% funding for our farmers in Campbell County. It is you know, a bad spot where an income producing animal that is very large um, dies. And so they're no longer to support the farm and now you have an additional burden. So we are now supporting that at 100%. We've also updated what we used to call our non-traditional program, but now we're calling our supplemental agriculture program and we've expanded opportunities for participation in that. And then we've also started a tree swap program. And essentially what this does is the conservation district will fund two new uh, kind of good sized trees that are native trees in exchange for a landowner removing an invasive tree. Two trees, two <coughs> new trees. Okay, as far as education goes, in the last two years we've introduced an adult continuing education scholarship because staying up to date and learning what the new best practice is, you know, what current research is, does often cost money, right, to go to these classes and attend webinars. So we are now supporting that. And then we also want to help our teachers of our students, right, uh, Campbell County's children. So we have a small program that we're getting the word out about in which the teacher that is like spending their own money to introduce concepts related to natural resource conservation can receive some support from us. And then we always do our art and writing contests. Um, you might know that we also help to support our Envirothon team and we have had some success in Campbell County. So three of the four Highlands High School Envirothon teams are going to state this year. So we are wishing them best of luck. Okay, events and programs. So we've recently updated our CAPE program, which is the County Agriculture Investment Program, to run annually. It used to do it every two years. So this is a change, so it's more work for us, but we feel like it's better for our professional farmers because when they have a need for their farm, they can put it in motion rather than waiting for a slower every two year cycle. In the last two years, we've introduced our spring and fall landowner expos. These are for all citizens, so farmers and, uh, you know, it's a family-friendly event as well. And then for our landowners that just want to take good care of their land. So what's included? The spring expo, which is this Saturday, family-friendly activities include an animal petting zoo, tractor races, learning to be a farmer for the day, and general education. 
And then in the fall, we have an open house event where we get all the organizations and resources to support our landowners in one room so they can do a one-stop shop and learn about the different programs that support them. Something new this year is called Raising Hope. This is an education program about farmer mental health stresses. We offered it in the fall and it was for our citizens as well as emergency professionals in Campbell County. We covered um, basically how to help when farmers and their families are experiencing mental health stresses. And this is really aligned with what we're seeing in the state legislature as well. One million dollars for this fiscal year was just allocated for programs related to rural mental health, suicide prevention, and farm safety. So it's exciting that we're aligning with the priorities of the state as well. And then finally, we believe in sharing our tools and we have an equipment library. So we've always had a lime spreader in that library, but last year we purchased a Caseco no-till cedar. So that has been added to our equipment library. We're getting the word out about that. And um, basically these tools are really expensive. You only use them a few times a year or when the need presents. So farmers can use this at an affordable rate and then um, plant their cover crops or plant their crops for the year. Okay, and then I want to quantify a little bit of the impact of these programs. So first off, who? There's about 500 farms in Campbell County. And in the last six years, we've lost almost 100 farms. The sales from Campbell County Farms are half crop sales and half livestock sales. And then we are leaders in certain <coughs> ways for the state, specifically Christmas trees and berry trees. And then how we impact, if you're looking at our budget, you can see kind of the, at a high level how we support. So a little more than 90,000 is budgeted for technical and financial assistance. That's for professional farmers. And then we have another bucket that is about $90,000 as well. That is for education and outreach that goes to our professional farmers, but also our students and families and landowners. One of the recent successes though required us spending no money, just getting creative. We did a no spend marketing blitz to let our citizens know about the backyard conservation program that we offer and we have recently seen an uptick in participation. So that's really exciting. I think we're gonna repeat that for some of our tree programs coming up as well. And then fiscal court and the conservation district, of course, right? We have the same goal, supporting our, um, our citizens in Campbell County. So just wanted to take a minute to acknowledge that work and how much you are already doing for our citizens and just to thank you and ask you, of course, to continue it. <laughs> so thank you for supporting us through the millage tax. Critical input for our budget enables the work that we are doing. Um, also, please continue to loop us in. You already pull us in when you think we can help, and it means a lot to us, so please continue. You already spread the words about events. You also attend them as well, so thank you for that. And then, um, as I mentioned, right, we're losing farms in Campbell County, and farm preservation is important, and it has impacts related to farming sales and agritourism. So when it is a win for our county, please continue to advocate for farm preservation. And you know, if families are concerned, please refer them to us so that we can help. So thank you for the time today. I wanted to highlight our Back Roads Farm Tour is coming up this summer on Saturday, July 20th. So always a good time, a great event for our families in the county, but also for our farmers. It does drive sales for them. So that wraps us up. That brings us back to Soil and Water Stewardship Week. Judge Executive Pendry, thanks for signing your proclamation for us. Well, I've got it for you here, and I'm coming around to deliver it. Okay.
fundamentals of the facts on the ground that feed us. He used to like to say that, uh, you know, for instance, when you want to cut trees down at the golf course or something like that, those trees produce the oxygen that we all breathe. And, uh, and then he also used to say, that all that stands between us and starvation, starvation is topsoil. So, just in case, you know, one of them. We might have to quote that. <laughs> <laughs> we have to quote that. I mean. I'm properly trained. Do we need to this area? That's right. Okay, so this is our proclamation. I uh, saw you get it in your hands over here. So, the water stewardship we Whereas healthy, fertile soil, clean water is the lifeblood of nutrition and sustenance throughout the world, and soil conservation is a benefit to everyone. And whereas effective conservation practices ensure soil, water, animals, plants, and air can provide a rich standard of living, whereas our survival and continued production and access to quality food and water depend upon the robust management of diverse natural resources nationwide, and where a stewardship calls upon every individual to help conserve these precious resources and ensure their prosperity for generations to come. Therefore, I, Steve Henry, Judge Executive of Cam County, do hereby proclaim April 28th through May 5th, Soil and Water Conservation Stewardship Week. And I know everybody's going to pay close attention to that. And, and if they aren't, they'll be sorry. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. Thank well, thank you, you so you much. Do. Thank yeah. you. We, we appreciate all that you do for us also, and all of the commissioners. Thank you so much for your support. Mm -hmm. That's a very, very nice presentation. Mm -hmm. really appreciate that. You took a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Keep you up. Can okay. get one more? Yeah. Oh, yes. Right. Go ahead. To, to your left, just two steps. Oh, all of them? Yeah. All of them. <laughs> One, two, three. One, two, three. Commissioners? Sure. Mm Presentation. Thank you, Kurt. Um, I was just looking at the stats, and it and you noted that 84 farms um, came out of production in the last six years out of the 493 farms that we have. So, so we lost about a sixth of our farms, but the land didn't go anywhere. These are just people who stopped farming and took the land out of production. So, is that the is that analysis correct? That um, the way I look at it. That's my understanding, but I'm going to pull in Patty. <coughs> I would say um, so. These statistics come from the National Agriculture uh, Statistics Service, and they come from the uh, the state gets them for us. And so those could be farms or uh, that have been brought out of production, or could have been sold and split uh, for houses. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, they don't drill down that far. We can find out that information if that is something that you want to know and reach out to them to find that out. Well, it just, it just uh, you know, we're losing our agricultural um, interest to some degree. Yes. So, in your opinion, is it, are they just bringing it out of um, livestock production or is livestock up and maybe um, crop production down? Is there any feel that you have on that? I don't know that we have a specific um, feel on which one it is. Yeah. We just know that um, having young farmers come in and take over some of the older farms, yeah. um, 
we are encouraging that and we're trying to find ways to help them through some grant funding you know it's a big capital that they have to put down to be able to purchase the land and buy the um, livestock or the equipment to be able to do that so um, it's it's probably they've been taken out of production and we're trying to help um, in different ways to encourage young farmers to be able to find a path and I noticed the uh Saturday at the fairgrounds, you're going to have a a uh, farm. Um, what do you call it? A fair? It's the expo. Yes. Expo. Yes. And uh, I noticed that you do take equipment on consignment. So, and you'll have an auction as part of that at 10 a.m. Right yes. at the fairgrounds. So, someone can put equipment on consignment, and then others can come in and um, make that exchange or you know, buy it if they want, and uh, that's a good idea. And I think that that's probably helpful to people trying to keep their land in production. Mm -hmm. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. And uh, and that's all the questions I have. I had one too, um, relative to some of the, the the practices of working with residents. I know the tree swap program you mentioned and highlighted as a new program. Yeah. How has that gone? I know it's two years now, and, and, and probably we're in the season of, and I know Gaduli is, Landscape is partnering with you all, or you partnered with them, yeah. I think as the supplier planter of the trees, or are they? There's, there's two ways. So the tree swap, um, we contracted with them. Uh, they're a local entity right here in Alexandria, and we had worked with them on some other things. Um, they will plant the trees, but that's a separate um, that's a separate payment that comes from the landowner, um, the resident. So we provide the trees, and a lot of the trees range between 200 to 250 each. Um, it's a seven to ten gallon tree, and they have really worked to only um, include invasive or non-invasives, and they're trying to weed out the invasives in their supply that they keep. Um, at their landscape business. So. And so if, if, if a landowner removes honeysuckle, is that included in that? Is, is, is I know you're looking at the uh, invasive pear trees. Yes. Things like and that. If, yes. If it's invasive and it's a bush or a tree, it can be replaced. Yeah. What a great program. I, I, you know, I saw that and shared that with some, some folks in town that you know, hopefully are utilizing that as well. Yes. We've had a great response. And we've had some returning users. We have a couple that the uh, residents that have like you know back their driveway put you know numerous trees and now they're trying to remove those and replace them with the non-basic so that's great okay. anybody else with a question okay thank you very much thank, thank you. you really appreciate you being here and for what you do mm -hmm.